So, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Data Lytics and ThoughtSpot Introducing ThoughtSpot for Retail webinar. Uh, my name is Drew James. I'm going to be your host for the day. Um, we also have a few of my colleagues on the line who we'll introduce in a second. Um, we seem to have uh, a good number of attendees joining us already, so hopefully there'll be a few more that come along in a minute. But um, we thought now is the time to uh, to get started, not to hang about. So, welcome everybody. First of all. Um, we have, as I said, ourselves some data analytics leading this uh, webinar. Um, my name is Drew James. I'm the retail sector account manager for data analytics. So, really looking to uh, explain how ThoughtSpot can be applied to the sector uh, in detail. Um, and then we have the team from ThoughtSpot who are sponsoring this webinar with us as well. So, myself, uh, we have uh, Dan, who's my colleague on the phone as well. Dan's a technical consultant uh, from data analytics. Um, Dan has uh, a multifaceted skill set. So, who not only is he uh, the, one of the uh, uh, main pre-sales guys uh, within data analytics for ThoughtSpot is also the um, mediator uh, on the call. Any questions you've got, if you could write them in chat to Dan. Dan will be picking those up as we go, and we'll uh, run through those questions at the end of the session and uh, hopefully get everything covered off. So that's the team from data analytics. Uh, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to be handing over to the ThoughtSpot guys. Uh, we have Mr. Mark Mason, who's the channel director who runs the relationship with data analytics, and uh, Steve Morse, one of the sales managers for ThoughtSpot, who's going to be going into the detail showing you a little bit about the product and talking about how ThoughtSpot can be applied to uh, some of the use cases we've seen in retail. Um, without further ado, I would like to give a little bit of an introduction to Datalytics because we are probably slightly the lesser known brand uh, of the two in this equation. Um, so Datalytics, we're a, a, a services company. We resell software as well as deliver services. And we've been partnering with ThoughtSpot for a little while now um, to, to be the, a, a local services and delivery partner for, for the guys at ThoughtSpot. Um, in terms of our business, we, we, we're UK based, we're about 60, 70 people strong, uh, a whole variety of different um, uh, customers in different industry sectors amongst like Flybe, JD Sports, EasyJet, as you can see on the right there. Um, JD Sports is a, a joint customer for both uh, Datalytics and ThoughtSpot, so that's a, a, a good example in the retail sector where we've seen some success already. Uh, and in terms of a business, we were growing as a business. We seem to be quite successful at the moment, which is excellent, not largely thanks to the uh, input from ThoughtSpot. Um, we're growing not only in the UK, but also have an offshore team in Bangalore too. So just as an idea of, of who data analytics are um, and what we actually do, we're a, a, a data engineering company. We provide data services and solutions for companies such as yourselves. So we look at you know, trying to build modern data architectures, the, the new world order of things, look at data lakes and big data solutions, Hadoop amongst others. Um, we've got a big focus on providing data-driven insights so understanding that having data in a place is great but actually having to deliver you know, the need to deliver actionable insights after collation of that data is critical um, we see a lot of companies don't necessarily take that final step to the actionableness of their insights and that's something we help to bring um, we help provide data centric solutions so operational integration of data uh, mobile systems web applications uh, business process management systems that kind of uh, area and we also deliver a, a uh, that we have a scalable delivery model. So we talk about not only um, being able to build and develop these solutions, but run managed services and uh, support contracts and uh, the rest of the things behind the scenes as well. So really what we're trying to be is an end-to-end -end data management and engineering organization that can augment our customers in, in whatever way, shape and form is, is best suited to their own individual requirements. So as part of this solution, um, obviously, we have a, a, a stack of technology that we bring to the market. Not being the biggest of companies in the world, um, we like to bring tools, bring products that are going to help in increase the, the, the speed and the quality uh, of our delivery. And so we've collated this stack of technologies which help us build uh, and deliver on what we do. So starting off at the bottom with the infrastructure layer, we have uh, Microsoft Azure partners, uh, Amazon AWS partners. We run uh, with a lot of on-premise systems too. So we can look after that infrastructure layer. We then look at the modern data architecture where we have a whole host of products and solutions and technologies where we can help deliver that data engineering layer, not least of which guys like Talons, Cloudera, Snowflake are, are uh, technology partners of ours. The main area which we're going to be focusing on today is in data-driven insights. So this is, as I said, driving actionable analytics, reporting, visualization, dashboarding of information to allow business people to actually take on board that data and do something with it and you know we do partner with guys like Tableau, Power BI, Zoom Datas but really at the moment we're seeing that ThoughtSpot is front and center of so many people's minds particularly in the retail space which is why we want to take the chance to take do this webinar to introduce the joint proposition of data analytics and ThoughtSpot to the market and really help to start build our relationship with the retailers out there and make sure that ThoughtSpot is, is front and center of our customers. 
as well. Then we have the data centric solutions, which is much more about bringing unstructured data in, web applications, et cetera. That's going to be the least of our, of our focus for today. So that, in a nutshell, is Datalytics. Um, we're here to support. We're here to lead this. We're here to help out however we can. So we've got a little call to action at the end of the session, which um, should be interesting and should help to show the joint value of, again, both Datalytics and ThoughtSpot as a proposition. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to say without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Steve, Stephen Morse, uh, from ThoughtSpot, who's going to run through the actual content for today. So, Stephen? I'm making you presenter as we speak. Uh, uh, okay, all right. Thanks, Drew. Uh, just one sec. Um, okay. All right, thanks for that, Drew. Um, it's probably worth uh, reiterating. And can I just check? Can everyone see my screen okay before I start blathering on? It's looking good to me, sir. It's looking good to okay. me. Okay. Um, just to reiterate what uh, Drew has said, um, very much our go-to-market proposition is uh, through partners. So we're obviously a software company. Uh, we write uh, analytics software that allows people to get answers to their questions very quickly. Um, what we don't necessarily have is domain expertise, uh, and that's where our partner network comes in. And so this sort of a combination of ourselves plus our partners normally means that uh, the value-added services that are provided by our partners alongside our technology make this a, a much better fit for people's uh, requirements. So that's why this is, um, is a joint event in case anybody's wandering out there. Uh, what I'm going to do for the next uh, half an hour or so before handing back to Drew is just um, set the scene um, about what ThoughtSpot's all about and more importantly to show you what the software looks like. Um, you know, I can talk for quite a long time about uh, how great our software is, but uh, being very visual and very straightforward to use, uh, it's often very easy or much easier to show people uh, what ThoughtSpot can do and how quickly it can return answers to people uh, rather than trying to explain via a set of slides. Um, but as you can see, and you probably know already, um, ThoughtSpot is search-driven uh, analytics and AI uh, software. And we say it's for humans because uh, we believe that we're taking a radically different approach to solving everyday business problems and hopefully that will become apparent. Um, with that in mind, hold on one sec. Uh, why do we think there is a, a need for something like ThoughtSpot? Well, it's probably worth uh, looking at where the marketplace is in terms of decision making. And we're not just talking about decision making you know, in business, but in all walks of lives. Um, as the volume of data increases dramatically uh, with things like social uh, media and all other sorts of data, the volume of um, electronic data being collected means that um, the ability to make decisions is actually becoming more difficult rather than easier because um, there's an awful lot of data being connected, uh, collected from a whole variety of different sources. And so we've chosen to you know, use some real life examples of where things happen very quickly, maybe not always in the manner that you might expect. And people need to make decisions very quickly to you know, avoid something happening or encourage it, something happening further. Um, and so how do people do that? Well, uh, traditionally, people have struggled, and you know we believe that some of the tools out there don't necessarily give you the ability to answer those qu questions quickly enough uh, to address some of the examples that we've got here on screen. And so, um, what you'll see is people talk about big data an awful lot, and big data seems to be, you know, fairly trendy these days, even though it's not necessarily anything new. Um, it's not about how you visualize the data, how many different graph types you can create. Uh, it's almost a question of how can you spread and push down that um, decision making to every single person to make a better decision more quickly. And it's something that you know many vendors have claimed to be able to do for many, many years, and no one has really cracked. And lots of you know successful software companies have emerged and and become very successful. And yet, even so, that decision making has never been pushed down to you know, every single individual and everyone should be able to make those decisions. And certainly in a business perspective, there's no reason why uh, everyone shouldn't be able to, you know, type in a question and get an answer back. Just because we can't do it in business doesn't mean that we can't or we shouldn't be able to solve that particular problem. Uh, so yeah, it's not how many ways can we visualize data? How many different types of graphs can we create? It's more a question of how many people can we empower to make a better decision? And that's the gap that we're trying to address. Um, and currently, this is what most organizations do. And, and I find this really depressing that almost every single organization we speak to, 
when we show them this slide or we talk about uh, the report factory, as it's often referred to, or how they address business questions currently, we show them this slide and there's lots of nodding heads and people scratching their chins um, and nobody can seem to get past this in a particularly element, uh, elegant manner. Uh, so, you know, if there is a business problem to be addressed, the traditional way of approaching this is a whole team of people go out and gather requirements. Well, that's a fairly lengthy process. That can be business analysts asking users what their typical questions are, how often they ask them, what sort of data they ask that question of, how they've got the answers coming back. This is a fairly you know, lengthy process and can use or take an army of consultants. You know, once that's done, and uh, then that needs to go back into IT. How are we going to start modeling this data? Do we want it queues? Do we want to pre-aggregate all of that data so that you know, we're pre-guessing what the questions are that are going to be asked? So when they're asked, we can deliver the answer very quickly. Um, what SQL queries do we need? Uh, how do we know what subsequent questions a user is going to ask? So we need to pre-guess what their uh, decision-making process is likely to be. Um, well, what happens if somebody isn't following a path that's traditional to them? That's a that's a lengthy process. The model, the data modeling part in itself, and once the data's all been collated, and then of course you actually have to get something down that uh, will return an answer to users, and that's typically in the form of a report or a dashboard. And there's a whole series of tools out there that um, you know currently claim to be able to do this, but you know the report creation again is the domain of you know the high priests of reporting. Uh, not anybody can create one of these reports. There's a technical uh, skill level required, which is beyond most business users. Uh, well, why is that? Uh, and so, you know, this is still a skill set that not everybody has, and it's not a particularly uh, straightforward process either. So even once those reports have been built, they then have to be shared with the users. And so ultimately, you know, the users will be published with their reports or their views or their analytics or their charts or maps or tables. But that, um, that whole process can take a long, long time. And so by the time the answer comes back to the users, the users have often forgotten why they asked the question. Uh, the question is not relevant. The question's changed. Um, it's just a, a generally very unsatisfactory experience. Um, and that's not criticizing anybody. It's a difficult problem to solve, but not one that anybody has solved, solved particularly elegantly so far. And if you look at the research carried out by some of the big analyst firms, namely Gartner, that has resulted in the large BI tools, business intelligence tool sets, only being adopted by 21% you know, of people in these large organizations. So, you know, why is one in five person people able to do this? Shouldn't everyone be able to get answers to their questions quickly? So this is a, it's a laborious, uh, time-consuming process which only serves uh, a very small number of people and doesn't typically help an agile business to, uh, to improve and make decisions. So I'm sure you can all realize, well, you know, there's a whole series of issues with this particular process. Um, so, you know, where are we going with all of this? Well, even if you go down the report factory route, uh, you're going to be presented with a report or a dashboard, which will tell you something that you may know or want to know. Um, but as I've already said, it's very often the case, especially these days, that the question changes before you get the answer coming back. So you need answers on the fly. So what happens if you do find yourself in that unfortunate situation? The answer's coming back and it's a static answer to a question that you don't need the answer to anymore because the question's gone on and changed. So how agile can you be? Well, if you scale that up um, and you think about the number of questions that are asked on a daily basis on any, in any large organization, the number of questions being asked is, runs into thousands. And those questions need to be answered very, very quickly. So this is a sort of multiplicative effect um, and can really affect the way that organizations uh, operate on an enormous scale, not just at the executive level, but you know, down to the individual contributor level. Um, and we think that's a, a problem worth looking at and a problem worth trying to solve. So um, how have we tried to address that? Well, you'll see in just a second, uh, and I think it's pretty reasonable to say that um, search, and I'll use the term search and Google sort of interchangeably, has you know, revolutionized the way that we all live. Um, how often do we 
all use or each use a search engine in our daily lives it's probably hundreds of times whatever it is you're looking for and so why can't uh, a business take advantage of search capabilities to get answers to their business questions and so the approach that we've taken is um, and bearing in mind the founders of ThoughtSpot come from Google let's try and take uh, search principles and apply that to everyday business questions everyone knows how to search why can't we put the ability to search in the hands of every user and get answers to their business questions rather than their day-to-day -day questions you know where's my taxi um, you know where's the near nearest restaurant uh, what time's the football on well those are all questions that you know we address on a daily basis why can't we uh, use that sort of search capability for business questions and expect you know similarly fast responses um, so that's what we've tried to do and hopefully that will become apparent as well and if you think about search whenever you use a search engine it's an almost instant response right so as you start typing in questions to your search engine you expect to get an answer coming back straight away that search experience is almost instantaneous and if that breaks down then people are not going to use search uh, at all and so if you think about Google or anything else you use it's a very very interactive experience uh, and so we need to replicate that if we're trying to do that on a business platform beyond that though uh, it's not just a question of asking question after question after question and the answer to your last question uh, may lead you to your next question um, but the next step on from that is, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could use the software to actually go out and ask a whole load of questions about my data and return answers to me that maybe I'm not aware of and that I would never find by just asking questions. And so we've even taken that one step further. So beyond search, uh, to use AI capability to use software to go out and say, here's uh, a set of data. I want you to ask multiple questions of this data and return back to me significant responses. And some of them may be known, some of them may not be known, some of them may be relevant, and some of them may, may not be relevant. But this is a way of um, turning that search capability into an automated process by which you can uncover uh, patterns that maybe uh, weren't obvious to you. And we're going to look at that in just a second. And so, you know, we describe this as getting you know smarter insights as you search the more you search the more the software understands your questions the more you'll be able to use uh, AI to uncover um, further patterns in your data um, the other thing is this needs to be um, uh, safe it needs to be secure it needs to be fast and it needs to be trusted and so we've had to build all of those uh, components into the platform uh, and to make this all transparent to the user because users just want to search they want to search and they want to get their answers back very quickly and so even though I'm trivializing uh, the user experience and you'll see in just a second it is very straightforward uh, there's an awful lot that's going on behind the scenes which users aren't terribly bothered about they just want to get their answers back so um, uh, there is an awful lot of complexity sitting behind the scenes which we won't touch upon today but we can do uh, another day uh, once you've seen what the software looks like all right so hopefully uh, uh, everyone's still there maybe somebody can say yes we are so I realize I'm not just talking to myself yes we are Steve thank you very much good all right I'm glad all right so um, what you should be looking at now is um, and can everyone see what looks like a very attractive um, dashboard on my screen and indeed yes right. we can. all right good uh, so what we're going to do now we've sort of set the scene as to what ThoughtSpot is all about um, as I mentioned at the very start of the presentation, what we choose to do is actually show people what ThoughtSpot looks like to whet their appetite. Uh, and that often sets the scene for what happens next. And so what I'm going to do is show you what the software looks like. And I'm actually going to show you how you can create uh, content such as what I'm looking at now. So, so this is ThoughtSpot. It's uh, running uh, under a browser. This is all browser based. So I have to be using Chrome. Uh, there's no local software downloaded to my local device. All you need is a browser and a valid login ID. Your data would have been loaded into ThoughtSpot previously, and in doing so, uh, your data is all optimized for search. And when I say all of your data, I don't just mean your column headings that are indexed. I mean, every single value is indexed for search. And so you'll see when I use the software, as I start typing in, a ThoughtSpot will search not just across column headings, it will search every single value and or suggest values to me as well. In terms of retail customers and the sort of retail questions that get asked, 
Um, one of our biggest customers is Walmart. And the reason we mentioned Walmart is not because they're a fantastic name, but also but partly because uh, they run vast quantities of data through ThoughtSpot. Um, they run up to 20 terabytes worth of data through ThoughtSpot, which should give you a feel for the magnitude of volume of data that ThoughtSpot can handle. Everything is loaded into our um, in-memory column store uh, database, which gives you that almost instant response rate that you're about to see, that search response experience as you type in. So that's all been done previously. And what I'm going to do is show you how ThoughtSpot can answer questions very quickly and actually result in these beautiful pictures that we're seeing here. So I'll create a heat map such as this. I'll probably create a line chart. Well, when I say I, I'll get ThoughtSpot to do it for me. This is typically the endpoint. The endpoint is not why people use ThoughtSpot. The people use ThoughtSpot because to get to the endpoint is almost instantaneous. And that's what I'm about to show you. Okay, so you could be looking at any number of BI tools at the moment. What I'm about to show you is how quickly a typical user can get to one of these answers. And ThoughtSpot will generate a graph or a chart or a map or a table based on the questions I'm asking. So I'll create some of these views now. I mentioned that uh, this is all search driven. So like any uh, good search, engine if I click on search in top left hand corner you'll see that ThoughtSpot will say okay it's asking me to ask a question uh, I'm ready to type in any sort of business question now I know what this data is because I've done this before uh, we've loaded up a retail data set you would know your data so you would typically know the sorts of questions you're going to ask um, but ThoughtSpot's saying to me well like any search engine do you want to use any of these recently used searches or shall I start prompting you for other searches which may be of interest? So it's already learned a little bit about how I've used the software in the past. Well, I'll do this next bit quite quickly and then I'm going to undo what I've done so you can see how, how this is working. So this is retail then data. So I might be interested in, let's say, um, revenue. Uh, I'll say I want it by uh, store region. And uh, let's see that monthly. Uh, let's try monthly. And actually, uh, that's going to look quite busy. I'd like just to see it for this year. OK, so let me type in this year. So I've typed in uh, a pretty simple business question. I want revenue with store region monthly, but just for this year. And without me having to do anything other than type in that question here, ThoughtSpot has taken me through, and it happened quite quickly, a whole series of analyses just by me asking the question. It hasn't said, do you want a table? Do you want a bar chart? Do you want a line chart? Do you want a filter? It's just given me the answer as I type that question in. Now, behind the scenes, if you think about it, quite a lot is going on, but I don't care as a user. All I want is an answer to my question in the fastest possible manner. So let me just uh, clear that. So in the top right-hand corner, I'm going to clear that, and I'm going to type that in again. And so as I type in R, E, V, you'll see that ThoughtSpot is saying, do you mean revenue? Do you mean revenue product name, or do you mean something else? It's actually guiding me through my analysis. I'll do this more slowly. Well, else I want revenue and ThoughtSpot aggregates up. It says my total revenue is 83.7 million in sales. I can choose how we aggregate the data, but the sum is the default. It's then saying, well, actually, you just did this search. Do you want to look at it broken down by store region? Well, if I type in STO, you'll see that it's saying, do you want store region? Do you want store region by month? Or do you want something else? Because all of our data is available for search. So let's look at uh, let's store region. Let me just go back. You see it's saying, do you want store name? Do you want store city, store state, store zip code? Well, actually, I want store region. Uh, it hasn't asked me. I haven't done anything else. It hasn't said, do you want a bar chart? It knows that a bar chart is the most appropriate visualization here. Um, again, I'll type in monthly. Now, monthly is obviously not in my data. Monthly is a keyword that ThoughtSpot recognizes. Again, an English-like keyword. Um, and what I will do is, if you're wondering how I know what to type in, well, uh, in the top right hand corner here, if you look at help, uh, there's a whole series of keywords which ThoughtSpot will understand and I'm going to use some of these. So these are pretty English like you probably think of typing in top, bottom, sort by, after, before, between and day of the week. Some very obvious English like terms that you throw into your business question um, to condense down your answer to get to the point that you want. Uh, so let's type in, I'll type in this year, oops, this year and we're back at where we are. Uh, so you can see uh, ThoughtSpot's picked out my store region 
in different colors. I didn't ask it to do that. And it's uh, picked out this year and it's added in a little filter to show me this year. I'm not creating or having to drag things around or specifying to ThoughtSpot, this is the type of view I want. Now remember, you're not stuck with this type of view. We're not keeping you, forcing you to do it our way. Um, and I'll show you how you can change that in a minute. But what I'm going to do is you see this little pin icon here. If I click pin, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, create a pin board. I'm going to call it retail. And this pin board is going to be similar to that pin board that we saw when I came into ThoughtSpot. So I've added that uh, chart, that line chart to my pin board. It may not be the view that I want. So this icon here allows me to change the visualization. And there's a whole gallery here. I'll say, well, let's look at my, uh, my data, the same data, but this time displayed as a heat map. And uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin that to my uh, pin board or dashboard as well. Let's add that too. So I've now got two visualizations stored away. So I've got an understanding of what my total revenue is, how it breaks down by store region, uh, how it breaks down by month. And I'm just looking at this year. Now, this is the same data I looked at a moment ago. It's just displayed in a different manner. Um, and my eye is automatically drawn down here. Um, this store region in the West in May has reasonably high sales. Uh, all of your visualizations in ThoughtSpot are active or interactive. So at any time, if I hover over them or if I right click, uh, I can investigate that further. So going back to what I was saying previously, there is no predefined uh, thought process here or, or drill path. Uh, you have complete freedom as a user to ask a question and then ask another question based on what you've just found out. You don't have to follow a predefined route that someone in IT set up for you. Uh, so I'm interested in knowing, well, you know, this we do, seem to have done very well in May 2017 in the West. Why was that? Well, I can look at the underlying data or I can drill down. And because all of my data is available for search, I might say, well, you know, what department was responsible for those sales? But if I click department, ThoughtSpot will now show me the breakdown of those data points by department. And that's quite hard to read. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to um, sort this. And uh, let me flip this around so it's a little bit easier to look. Okay, so it looks like, let me save that to my pin board. There we go. So I've now saved, I should have saved three views. It looks like uh, for that particularly successful uh, month, gifts were uh, our best selling product. So we might be thinking, well, who are the people who are buying those products? Would we like to deal with them in a certain manner? Would we like to offer them some sort of premium service or cross sell them or upsell them or not sell them to them at all? I don't know why you'd want to do that. Again, if I right click, uh, I can exclude them. I can include them. I can drill down still further. Who are those people? Where do they live? Well, let's look at uh, customer name. There we go. Customer name. Now that's pretty busy. Um, I may not be interested in all of the customers in that group. So I'm going to go back and alter my search. Let's say top 15. I want to press return. ThoughtSpot will give me my top 15 customers who bought gifts uh, in this particular date range in the store region west. And I can go beyond that. And let's save that one more time. And uh, my pin board now should have been built up. So you've got the understanding of how you know you type in a business question and you drill around, you type in another business question, and the sort of results that you should end up with are this. Here's the sort of masterpiece of um, dashboard that I just created. So you saw me create this first line chart. Well, I didn't create it, ThoughtSpot created. I asked a question of ThoughtSpot and it created this uh, line chart for me. I then flipped it into a heat map. I then investigated, I think, one of these cells more closely, which resulted in uh, this particular uh, bar chart here. I was then interested in finding uh, sales for gifts or the top customers for gifts, and that resulted in this one. And so on you go. These are all interactive uh, web pages. So if the data changes, the views will change. I can uh, export any of these um, to static images if I want to share them. I could export this to a PDF if I wish. I can also share these views uh, with any other ThoughtSpot user. Um, and we were showing an insurance audience yesterday the fact that I can give one of my colleagues you know, edit view and I type in their name. I might share this with Graham, for example. So he'll be able to access this um, uh, dashboard as well and use it as a starting point and carrying on and doing his own analysis. The last thing I want to show you 
because this is meant to be a sort of appetizer rather than you know, an in-depth demonstration of ThoughtSpot is. So far, all I've been doing is searching, uh, getting answers, then doing another search and then drilling and finding more insight and searching again. I mentioned that it's also possible to use ThoughtSpot to go away and ask multiple questions of your data on its own and allow you then to decide what is relevant and what isn't relevant. Uh, so, for example, you might be interested in why there was a, a drop in sales in February 2017 in the East. Uh, what was the result of that? Um, well, if I right click, and you've seen me do this quite regularly, I could drill down if I wanted to. I can show underlying data. But what I can also ask ThoughtSpot to do is I can get it to auto analyze that group of records. And by doing so, and you'll notice at the top of the screen, um, that behind the scenes, ThoughtSpot has gone away and it has carried out some uh, in-depth analysis of those records. And when I click on that analysis, it will say, well, this is the original query. It actually ran through over 5 million uh, records of analysis very, very quickly. And these are the uh, analyses it's come back with, some of which may be uh, relevant to you and some of, uh, some of which may not. All we're showing is that these groups of uh, customers are statistically different, significantly different to all of the others. Uh, these customer cities had significantly uh, higher sales uh, than everybody else. Now, you may know that, you may not know that, uh, but you'll find that you'll be presented with a whole dashboard of insight, some of which may be familiar, some of which may not. Um, and the whole point of this is to uncover insight that maybe isn't obvious to you or insight that you would have to find by using the search capability and you might find yourself anyway and if you look at this it's obviously just another thought spot pin board uh, which you can treat as any other pin board as a jumping off point to carry out further analysis now i've used the defaults here you can see custom analysis uh, if you want to exclude or include certain fields that you know are relevant or aren't relevant you can do so. And if you want to change the significance levels that we're using here within ThoughtSpot, and then equally you can do so as well. I've just chosen all of the defaults. And interestingly, in subsequent versions of ThoughtSpot, you'll be able to embed um, routines from R, which some of you may already be using. So um, that is all that I wanted to uh, show you. Hopefully that's been uh, of use. It's whetted your in insight or your appetite for how a thought spot may be of use in a, a retail context. Um, I'd like now to um, to hand back to Drew, if that's okay. Fantastic indeed. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, yeah, so hopefully we've we've achieved what we set out to do today by showing you how ThoughtSpot can be applied to uh, helping understand analytics for the business user and for more people within a, within a, a, a retail organisation. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a few questions that come out. Of this so there's uh, a couple of options either Dan um, have you had any questions come through that we've got a few minutes to respond to immediately uh, yeah there's probably a couple of things we could we could run through um, first one here which is which we've got is uh, do I have to so I think we mentioned earlier yeah, do, do I have to use AWS to run ThoughtSpot Okay. Do you want me to answer that? Please, far away. Um, there's three ways in which you can deploy ThoughtSpot. Uh, AWS is the um, example that we use here because this is actually running off an AWS instance, uh, coincidentally, in Frankfurt. Um, we also have an appliance, which is a, effectively a device which sits within your firewall. Um, and obviously, a lot of big financial institutions do that. And there's also a VMware uh, version as well which uh, not many people deploy because it's fairly uh, memory intensive. So it's normally AWS or the appliance. The user experience, by the way, is identical. They don't know whether they're using an appliance or an AWS instance. Very okay, good. great. I guess that answers that, answers that question. Um, and another one which has come through is, how long does it take to set up ThoughtSpot? Uh, so what normally happens is, um, well, there's two answers. Very often after people see 
uh, what is a fantastic demonstration, I'm sure you'll agree. The next step, people say, well, that's all very well, but what we'd really like to see is this working with our own data. And so the next step on from what you've just seen is that we very often take a customer's data, and we do this in conjunction with our partners, and we load it into ThoughtSpot and then play that back to the customer to prove the value. Now that data load can take as little as an hour. We've done this recently with a big insurance company and by the time they gave us the data, we had it uploaded and we were off and running. Um, but that's with a ThoughtSpot instance that's been set up previously. So the data load is relatively trivial, it's a matter of hours. In terms of setting up ThoughtSpot in production, that's something we do with you and our partners once the software's been purchased. And there's normally a service engagement of about a week to do that, but that involves you know, setting up the AWS instance, loading ThoughtSpot onto it and loading up all of your data and then you're ready to go. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Excellent. Slightly sealing our thunder from the next action slide. <laughs> Just there, but never mind. That's all good. Anything else, Dan? Uh, yeah, there's a couple more questions we can go through this time. Um, so next one is how uh, how much training do users need to use ThoughtSpot? Okay, that's a good question because um, we learnt the hard way. We thought that uh, this software is so fantastic and users are so clever, we'll just give it to them and it'll all be magic and people will give us loads of money and we can really rich really quickly. Now, it didn't quite work out that way because um, you know people type in what is uh, my best sales or what, who, who is my best top salesman. Now, ThoughtSpot's not going to understand that. So there's a degree of orientation that's required um, and it normally takes about half an hour and we do this you know, for end users, number of end users that go, about half an hour for people to orientate themselves to, well, they can log on obviously, that's logging on, uh, where to find the data, that's one click, but then typically how to search. And it's just to learn not to type in uh, things like best, worst, because you know, ThoughtSpot just doesn't understand that, that's a subjective term, but to understand the sorts of things they should be typing in and the th sorts of things they shouldn't be typing in. So normally most users go through a, a half hour at most orientation session. Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it on the questions for now, but I'll keep an eye out for any, uh, for any others. Excellent. Good stuff, right, Dan? Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you for your time as well. Um, so that takes us on to the, the next actions or the, the the call to action, as we like to call it. Um, and and Steve alluded to it earlier on. So what we're looking to do now, um, or what we recommend we do as the next step, um, is to take a look at your data. Um, as Steve said, very easy to take a, a pre-configured instance of ThoughtSpot, load it with some of your own. We call it custom uh, data, um, and then see what we can bring out of it and we would do that in a uh, uh, in a session with yourselves we can either do it remotely or a webinar much like this or we come come and see you guys uh, and, and and do it face to face um so what we're saying is let's call us up on it let you know challenge us let's see what we can do with your data and let's see what insights we can drive um in that short space of time the idea being that obviously if we do something good in that time uh, in a few couple of hours then being able to do it uh, on an ongoing basis there's a whole lot more we're going to be able to find out so what we're asking you to do very simple uh, myself drew james drew.james at datalytics.com and stephen stephen.morse at thoughtspot.com ping us both an email copy us both in on that let us know um who you are where you're from uh, and what it is you'd like to take a look at what your what your kind of idea behind getting us involved is and uh, we'll follow up together um, a range of time, whether it's before Christmas or not now, that's probably slightly doubtful. We're probably gonna be doing this moving into the new year, but we'll set up a session for January. We can come in, sit down with you, take a look at your own custom data sets and drive a load of analytics uh, uh, and output through ThoughtSpot. Uh, so that's it, really. Um, I think, unless Steve, Dan, anything else to add at this point? No, not for me. And not for me either, no. All good. Jolly good. So we've been nice and concise, short, sweet, simple, and to the point. You've heard from Datalytics sponsoring the webinar. You've seen the ThoughtSpot solution in place, up and running and working. Hopefully you understand why this proposition exists. How, hopefully you understand the value it can bring to, uh, to yourselves and to anybody, really, in the retail sector. And hopefully we'll be hearing from you uh, in the not too distant future. So I'd like to say thank you again to everybody that's been on the call, the, all the attendees that are out there. Um, to Steve for joining, for Dan to, for moderating, and we'll speak to you all very soon. Cheers, and have a good day. Bye-bye.